afternoon and uh, I'd like to welcome all of you to this webinar series uh, through the Talent Lens brought to you by uh, Pearson Talent Lens. Pearson Talent Lens is an assessment company that helps organizations discover, recruit and develop high potential candidates in a scientific way. Our offerings include assessments for HR recruiters and learning and development professionals. Our guest speaker for this afternoon is Rupinder Singh who will be talking about e-learning in depth. Now, Rupinder is a seasoned training professional with more than two decades of experience in training and development. He's also a distinguished Toastmaster with the highest qualification available in the Toastmasters education program. In August of 2018, Rupinder represented the district in the World Championship of Public Speaking at Chicago, where he stood second in the semifinals. Rupinder also holds a diploma in training and development from the Indian Society of Training and Development, which is a gov Government of India accredited institution that specializes in imparting programs on training and development. Pindar also spe specializes in e-learning, instructional design uh, and soft skill training. He is also experienced in mobile learning, virtual classrooms, software sim uh, simulations and a whole gamut of soft skills training from the executive to le leadership level. With that, um, Let's begin. Um, Rupinder, please take it away. Okay, great. I'll talk about false starts. Let's start. Uh, let's try this once more, one more time. My name is Rupinder, and we're going to talk about the e-learning and the A to Z of it. I will first give you the presentation, and I would ideally want that you ask me questions towards the end. If you have any questions, just pack them. Probably they will get answered as I go along through the slides. I often like to start my presentations with the fact that, uh, well, for example, right now there are 39 slides in my presentation. So if at any point you feel like that I'm getting too boring for you, or you feel like throwing a brick at me, well, you can't throw a brick at me because right now I'm not within reach, number one. Number two, it is not polite to throw bricks at people. And uh, number three, just remind yourself it's 39 slides. How bad could it get, right? So let's get started. So the agenda for today, we're going to look at the basic essentials. Uh, what is e-learning? We might look at some learning and de development principles as we go along. And then we will look at what is e-learning. We will also look at why e-learning. We will look at the how of e-learning, how it works. Then typically, what are the e-learning activities that we can, uh, we can utilize? the tools and technologies that I use these days and something called the learning management systems or as we in e-learning circles like to call it the LMS. We'll also look at the challenges that e-learning faces nowadays, nowadays and what the future holds for e-learning. So like I promised, we will start with the essentials. So let's look at a basic rule of learning. You see the picture of a child and this is something that I was taught the moment, uh, the first time I stepped into this world of instructional design e-learning that children learn only when they are interested. On the other hand, adults learn only when they find it relevant. Which is why you will see that adult education is more about specialization. Whereas when we try to teach a child, we try to teach them almost everything in the world which is why you will see when you're teaching a child you will see a lot of colors you'll see a lot of creativity but when you teach an adult you tend to get very focused on what they want to learn adults have this tendency about WIFM what's in it for me let's uh, keep that in mind as we go ahead now what are the competencies that we can teach well, to my mind as far as I'm concerned we either teach values, we deliver knowledge, or we teach skills. Back in my days, when I was growing up, I would learn my values at uh, home. I would gain knowledge in school, and I was given the impression that ultimately I would learn some skills in college. These days, it's become slightly convoluted. Because we have parents who are working, we do, who might not be able to spend much time with their children. Sometimes the onus of teaching values falls on the schools. And 
because we are living in an increasingly competitive world sometimes it the onus of teaching skills also falls on the schools that is why you see children preparing for competitive exams right at the beginning so somewhere the whole learning and development arena is becoming it's going towards a convergence where learners will require knowledge values and skills at the same level and e learning can definitely help us but how exactly so we also so one of the most one of the most uh, celebrated principles in learning and development is that you have an objective at on one side and you have the assessment on other and it is said that when your assessment matches the objective or when your objective matches the assessment you 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 have a successful learning hence every successful learning objective matches assessment for example let us say that we are learning how to drive a car and the one way to learn, learn it would be that we look at a person driving a car how they using the gear stick how they using the clutch how they using the accelerator how they using the steering wheel or how they are using or how they using the other components of the, in the car probably the music system we could look at it or somebody could show it look this is how you do it but the ultimate experience the ultimate learning will happen only when we learn to drive the car ourselves why am i stressing on this is because e learning the kind of topics it deals with they are more suited towards like i called out in the previous slide the knowledge and the skill side for example when it comes to values e learning might not be the best tool to teach values but when it comes to knowledge and skills e learning i could say could be more effective than uh, than classroom training itself <clears throat> moving on so again another principle of uh, successful learning is the arcs principle which is to say that your learning must first attract attention it must establish relevance it must deliver confidence and finally the learner must derive satisfaction out of it so how does that happen attention and relevance happen because in in the so in the case of kids we focus more on attention so that we retain their attention and probably relevance takes a back seat but in the case of adults relevance becomes more important than uh, than attention because once you have established the why uh, what's in it for me you will be able to you will be able to deliver you will be able to convince an adult and after that it is a simple matter of establishing confidence and, uh, and satisfaction so let's before we go into what e learning is first of all let's look at what e learning is not it is not a swiss knife for all learning solutions many times i uh, come across people who come to me and say that okay we can probably do this by e learning and i have come across people who probably wanted to fly a plane yeah uh, through e learning well not exactly possible although i would say that a flight simulator comes very close it is not a replacement for classroom training there are some occasions where classroom training will be the best where, where will be the best option in fact in all situations classroom training would be the best option because nothing beats a human to human interaction hci will never beat the human to human interaction that you have inside a classroom it is said that it is always more economical than a classroom training well it is not always more economical yes e learning has a wide reach that that is true yes e learning can cross geographies yes e learning makes a avail, uh, learning available anytime anywhere but in a class uh, but it may uh, let's say that you've got only 15 learners and they have to get trained on let's say a life skill let's say punctuality and it would be more economical to pull them out get them into a classroom give them about a 15 to 20 minute lecture on punctuality than developing in a 15 to 20 minute uh, module on e learning for them uh, e learning is not using different learning principles than traditional training 
whatever you have learned about learning design, whatever you have learned about instructional design, for example, the ADI model or the rapid prototyping model, or for that matter, Bloom's taxonomy, or for that matter, Kirkpatrick's, uh, uh, Kirkpatrick's measures of learning, all of them find application here. It does not use anything different. It is said that e-learning is expensive. If we go back to my previous example where I talked about punctuality, if you are going to do it just for that and we are going to install a learning management system and then add learners to it, yes, e-learning will be expensive. But when it comes to spreading learning geographically to multiple audience across multiple countries, across multiple languages for that matter, e-learning becomes less expensive than classroom learning. So the amount you would spend per learner through e-learning in that case would be lesser than what you would spend in a classroom. <clears throat> it is time consuming. It is not time consuming provided you get your objectives right. Provided you get your learning objectives right. What exactly do you want out of e-learning provided you get that right. E-learning is not time consuming. Now that we have looked at what e-learning is not let us look at what e-learning is actually. <clears throat> Simply speaking, e-learning is where technology meets learning. As simple as that. E-learning e is the enablement of learning through a technology intervention. E-learning is the enablement of learning where we use, where we try to let go of a, a physical teacher. The teaching happens through technology. Once again, I am emphasizing it is not, it is not, it is not a replacement for classroom training. E-learning is simply technology enabled learning. There are some things that e-learning does very well. In, there are some things that classroom trainings do very well and both will coexist for some time to come. For, 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 for not some time to come, for a lot of time to come. Moving on, let's look at why do we want to why do we want to invest in e-learning? Many reasons. I have called out a few of them. The first one of them is obviously any time. So you could have you could take an e-learning module at any time you want. It is always going to be there. Uh, it will it will not require the presence of a it will not require the presence of an instructor or a facilitator. It is on demand. It is available anytime. The second big advantage is it is available anywhere. So to speak that if you have a computer or these days even a mobile phone, you will have access to, you can have access to e-learning. It is self-paced. Now one place where a classroom training is not successful is in, we go by the assumption that all students can or maybe they will find a way to learn at the same pace. This is not always true. I mean across learning styles, some people learn by listening, other people learn by, uh, other people learn by uh, seeing, some people learn by doing. We across uh, how they interact, some people, uh, so some people like to try it out, other people like to watch and then make observations. Somewhere classroom training has that challenge that it cannot carry all the learners along and which is why you have repeat sessions, which is why you have uh, catch ups with your uh, participants where you again go through the same learning principles over, over and over again. E-learning on the other hand is self-paced. You sit and you, you sit at a desk and you learn yourself. The other big advantage of um, having a self-paced learning is that you want to learn at, because you want to learn at your own pace, you probably will not feel embarrassed that, okay, I am not learning as fast, uh, as fast as the others. The, it is also measurable. Now, remember earlier I said that e-learning was all about, uh, it, it comes into its own when it is about delivering knowledge or practicing some skills. Uh, and this is measurable. E-learning can actually measure the before and after, and that comes out very well in when it comes to when it comes to e-learning. 
like i said e learning is also discrete so you don't really have to be embarrassed by the smartest kid in the class or if you are the smartest kid in the class you really don't have to impose yourself on other probably the next uh, advantage is the biggest advantage that uh, e learning offers it is geographically available it is available across all uh, across across the earth anywhere there is an internet uh, connection you can access e learning and not just uh, geographically av available it is also linguistically available so to speak that if you have a course you could convert that course into spanish into chinese into hindi into tamil into malayalam and you could still deploy it without having to make too many changes to the course itself except of course the the uh, the content that has to be translated also it is easy maintenance let's look at our college education system for example i would recently i happened to look at the course content for uh, my cousin <coughs> i recently happened to look at the course content uh, for my cousin who is doing a bachelor's in education and i found that they started using bloom's taxonomy only as late as 2002 or 2001 and bloom's taxonomy has been in existence since 1969 now just by that measure alone we were a good uh, 20 30 years behind and that course was not updated e learning updations are much easier than let's say classroom trainings you would have to go back and update your participant packets and your uh, presentations and your facilitator guides it is in one place all you have to do is go make change to a particular file and that's it and let's now look at how e learning works so before we look at how e learning works we will look at the traditional class uh, we will look at the traditional classroom uh, traditional classroom model so earlier you used to have let's say a teacher or an instructor who would address a group of students who would be provided with some knowledge that was uh, that was that was there inside some books or in libraries and the teacher would each uh, in a classroom ultimately there would be certifications and there would be some money involved in the administration part of the school or the university where you were studying now let's see how e learning begins to change the scenario first of all we segregate the whole part about uh, the the teachers the the content and the students so for example we have uh, so we have these books they are getting replaced by a computer so all of the knowledge is getting replaced and it is residing inside a computer the there is something called a cloud now the, this cloud will uh, now this cloud will form a set of apis and i will come back to those apis in a later slide <clears throat> the students will now learn from inside the computer earlier they were doing it in a classroom and now watch what has happened that you've got content on your left hand side and the learning happening on your uh, right hand side now this gives rise to uh, now this gives rise to two uh, uh, systems the first of which is the learning content management system which houses all of your learning content and then you have the learning management system which takes care of the administration which takes care of the uh, how the course content is delivered which takes care of certifications which takes care of how you pay for it there's a payment gateway and so everything essentially is happening involving computers ultimately you have the learning management system on one side and you have the learners on the other side and these are the learning apis that i was talking about so we have something called scorm we have something uh, and scorm actually is getting enhanced to experience api or x api as i call it and we have something called the aicc aicc stands for 
uh, aircraft in industry CBT committee. Now, how does this work? How, uh, I know these are new terms for you. There is SCORM, there is AICC, there is Experience A API. The best way to understand SCORM is to imagine a DVD player. A DVD player might belong to any company. It could be, let's say, it's a Sony DVD player. Does that mean that a Sony DVD cannot run a Samsung DVD, uh, a Sony DVD player cannot run a Samsung DVD or vice versa? Can a Samsung DVD player not run a, a, a Sony DVD? Of course not. Since DVD players, they conform to, uh, since DVD players, they conform to a certain standard. The DVDs themselves, they follow the same standard. So what you do is that you add the, so what you do is that you add the, you just play the DVD inside the DVD player. Think of SCOM as the standard for e-learning. So I might develop my e-learning using any particular tool, for example. I might develop my e-learning using, uh, let's say, Articulate Storyline, maybe uh, Camtasia Studio. But all I do is I export it in SCOM format. What my learning management system does, it is looking for the SCOM format. Once it sees the SCOM format, it will be able to figure out, okay, this is the table of contents of the course. This is the time the course will be released to the learners. The, okay, the learner one has access to the course. Learner one access slide X on course Y. The learner, uh, the learner two is right now attempting the quiz. So through SCOM or through AICC, the, the system is able to track which learner accessed which course at what time, whether they paid for it, whether they did not pay for it, whether they have qualified in it, whether they are, whether they are, uh, whether they are going to get certified, whether there is a prerequisite to a course, point them towards that course and uh, have them undergo that course and then come back and take this course for which it was a uh, prerequisite. And there are many learning management systems. Uh, right now, the flavor these days is cornerstone on demand, CSOD as we like to call it. Uh, some total is there, then Blackboard is, it is a very popular uh, learning management system. Moodle, on the other hand, is open source. So we, if we have any open source aficionados over here, then Moodle is available for free. Learning management systems can be costly. The, I mean, uh, if you were to buy a full-fledged version, it could set you back min by mi a minimum of $60,000. But uh, Moodle, on the other hand, is free, but then you will also need to have a know-how of how uh, learning management systems work in order to effectively work across, uh, work on Moodle. No, so uh, ne next up, let's look at some examples of e-learning. So, for example, this is what a typical learning management system looks like to the learner. So, as you can see that we have some courses over here. There is sales training uh, 101. As you can see that there is the, the, the status. It gives, a, it's slightly shaded. That means that the student has accessed at least some part of the course. If you look at the other courses, the status is not showing anything. So that means that student has probably not even started attempting uh, attempting the course. <clears throat> uh, what is the due date? So you can program these sort of things. Uh, for some uh, courses, for example, new higher orientation, it says ILT, which means that only, uh, ILT is instructor-led training, which uh, indicates that it is a classroom training. Now, what is a classroom training doing inside an LMS? Well, it is uh, maintaining attendance and it is maintaining a record of students who attended and probably somewhere in this course there will be an assessment which will happen through e-learning. So this is what a learning management system looks like. Now if we go inside a learning management system, let's look at the kind of courses that you can go through. So uh, for example, this is an assessment, leadership versus management and what you do is that you drag and drop uh, values from here over to one of the columns here. So what do managers do? What do uh, leaders do? And once you click submit, then you've completed your assessment, your assessments. 
of course there is also cisco webex there, there is also webex meeting we are right now connecting through adobe connect and this is becoming one of the one of the major uh, uh, avenues in e learning where uh, you are getting the best of both worlds so you have uh, you have the experience of uh, of an instructor who is interacting with you through uh, through a web conference and the you also have the capability of e learning so this sort of a learning we, uh, is called blended learning of course it will also require that you are present at a specific uh, time if not at a specific place uh, for the lecture as you can see that a few of the students one of them is probably inside a library the other one is outside and we are at different locations the all of them are able to uh, access the learning from one place at uh, uh, from from at one point of time at the at the same point of time from different places <clears throat> so moving on there are many tools that you can use for example if you're going to author e learning you could use articulate studio you could use articulate storyline these days articulate 360 is the is the uh, is the preferred format lectora is there claro is there then you have simulation tools particularly useful for software simulations when you're trying to teach software you have adobe captivate you have camtasia studio you also have some high end to uh, simulation such as a sima training suite detango uh, and how when, when i say high high end simulations what i mean is that uh, let's take the example of a sima training suite for example now if i was to create an e learning out of the screen that you are seeing uh, out of these uh, attendees that you see on your uh, right hand side out of this chat a sima will capture each of these like an object so a drop down is actually a drop down it is not a graphic it is actually a drop down you can actually go in there and change values let's say there is a rupinder there and you want to change that rupinder to robert you could actually do it and it will replicate across the whole course it will say that wherever you find rupinder replicate it with robert and it will do so and that is where translation becomes uh, so so easy the all you need is a corresponding translation uh, of the content that you've got uh, online then uh, adobe captivate also does it but adobe captivate does it more like a an image so if adobe captivate was capturing this it would be capturing it like an image then you could add your own interactivity to it so if you want to add a drop down box you'll have to add it manually in case of asima it gets added as it is so uh, that makes it more effective but that also makes asima more expensive than adobe captivate you for graphic editing you've got tools like adobe photoshop for audio ed uh, editing you've got audacity video editing you've got adobe premiere you've got learning content management system in which you can go create content on your own you can you also have virtual learning environment such as blackboard collaborate adobe connect through which we are uh, so through which we are uh, connecting right now through which we are uh, interacting right now you've got cisco webex you've got uh, citrix go to meeting another example of e learning uh, is offered by uh, pearson itself i mean if you look at pearson online english or uh, pearson online english or there is this uh, there is this uh, test for uh, pearson uh, that pearson conducts for for the understanding of english language i mean all of this is done through e learning and pearson online english is a perfect example about the 33 million students have benefited from uh, pearson on online english and that is an indication of how uh, far it has gone how far how far it has penetrated so there are various output formats you, you could have audio or video uh, the most popular one of course is shockwave although it is on its way out with the uh, Apple with drawing support for the Flash Player, and then followed by Android. Android phones stopped uh, using the uh, stop using the uh, Flash Player. These days, the uh, preferred output is HTML. HTML is preferred because it offers a responsive interface. So, if you whether you are accessing your course through a mobile, or whether 
you are accessing your course through a um, laptop or through a tab, it does not uh, make any difference. It will still give you the same, uh, uh, almost the same experience, if not the same experience. EPUB again is a PDF, for example. So those are the e-publications. Kindle, for example, is making huge inroads into that. And then we've got the Java output format. Now this has happened because Shockwave uh, on its own, or Shockwave is on its way out and Java is considered to be a better replacement for Shockwave uh, output, you know, for Shockwave output. So where e-learning doesn't succeed? First of all, it this is humor, uh, human interaction. E-learning, uh, for that e-learning, because it does not have a human on the other hand, people are usually reluctant to interact with a machine. I mean, you can, <coughs> I apologize. You can also uh, look at uh, the first time you were introduced to a, uh, to a computer. There was a certain degree of trepidation that, okay, what am I going up against? Although in the millennials, I would say that that trepidation is on a decline, but still we do require a human interaction, uh, we do require human inter interaction. It is most effective with knowledge based uh, education uh, and because for knowledge based education it is easy to create corresponding assessments. As we go up the, the chain of uh, Bloom's taxonomy, we find that uh, it uh, becomes slightly more difficult. Uh, so, for example, if you look at the uh, if you look at the various levels in uh, Bloom's taxonomy, we start at remembering, then at understanding, then at applying, then at analyzing, evaluating, and finally the the uppermost level is creation. So, for remembering, for facts and principles and procedures, it is easy. Facts are facts. I mean, if there are eight planets in the solar system, then there are eight planets in the solar system. Nothing much that uh, you can do about it, and the assessment will be corresponding. Uh, again, understanding or comprehension. Again, it is it is more uh, easier to develop when it comes to application. Developing the corresponding assessment becomes a little difficult, and it gets even more convoluted when we. Uh, move up the chain to analyzing, evaluating, and creating. And again, the whole thing is that it may not complete the arc cycle. Why? Because the evaluation, the the, the assessment does not correspond to the objective. So it may not uh, complete the arc cycle. Uh, it requires a specific skill set. Developing e-learning is, no, nowadays it is becoming easy, but there was a time when you had to program you have to have a good knowledge of programming, of writing, of um, of graphic design, of presentation design. Now it is becoming much easier, but at that time it was considered very difficult to create uh, e-learning. And I'm talking uh, as far back as 2005, 2006, when most of the development used to happen using Adobe Flash, and back then it was known as Macromedia Flash. Uh, now, of course, we've got tools, we've got Adobe Captivate, we've got Articulate Storyline, which is very similar to what uh, to Microsoft PowerPoint. And in fact, they also allow that slides from PowerPoint be imported into uh, either Captivate or into Articulate Storyline, and then you could work on them from there. <clears throat> the cost of implementation is high. I mean, uh, if you look at the cost of a learning uh, management system, uh, that itself, if you invest in it, could set you back by 75,000. Even if you go on a software as a service model, it could be expensive un unless you've got a large audience. The Probably the biggest uh, barrier to e-learning is uh, ineffective design skills. Now, learning designers tend to believe that almost everything can be developed using and e-learning. Learning, learning designers tend to believe. And while theoretically it could be true, yes, given the enough number of resources, which is with borders on infinite, given enough time, given enough um, 
with the, given the quality measures, we could perhaps design an e-learning that could address almost every problem in the world. But the point is that do we have that kind of time? Do we, will we get that kind of quality? Uh, do we have that kind of a budget? And the moment these thoughts start, uh, these factors start uh, setting in, and they always do, you uh, always have to trade off that, okay, let's do classroom for this one and e-learning for this one, or maybe we could do we go, go the blended approach for each one. So what is the future of e-learning? What does it uh, look like? Well, to me, uh, you have MOOCs, or uh, as I like to call them, uh, we, we call them MOOCs, we also, uh, this time for Massive Open Online Courses. So you must have heard of uh, websites like Udacity, Udemy, EDX. Now these are all MOOCs. They have now these they have these courses that are primarily video, and then they have assessments that are primarily e-learning. Now uh, when you have mass, uh, so MOOCs have been particularly successful so much so that I have heard universities deploying their entire programs or uh, entire uh, degree programs as a MOOC and one example was a very uh, renowned university they decided to put their MBA program online and a curious thing happened there earlier their intake was 150 students for uh, for every year and about um, about uh, 400,000 people used to apply for those 150 seats. Uh, for those 150 seats, when they put this course out online, the number went up to a million of the people uh, of uh, of the people who applied. But the number of people who graduated was about a thousand or 1,500. Now you might say that yeah, yes, the success rate is less, but you know, compared to the fact that 150 people uh, is the intake, and uh, 150 people is the intake, and about let's say about 150, it's almost 100 percent, 100 of 150 of them come out with MBAs, and here we have about uh, you know one, uh, 1 million people uh, applying for the course, but yet only 1500 graduating. But the point is that look at the infrastructure cost; it costs nothing, and still you're producing more number of MBAs per year than you would have done in a traditional classroom setup. So from that perspective, I would say that yes, it was uh, it, it was a success. Uh, yeah, you could say that the percentage of people passing out was lesser as compared to the uh, in uh, when you look at it. But then uh, as a famous saying goes that statistics can prove anything, even the truth for that matter. I just want to before I close, I just want to show you and uh, I want to tell you that we are right now on the 30th slide. So there are nine more slides to go after this. So if, even if you've got found out a way of throwing bricks at me, please hold off. Uh, I promise this will be over very soon. I wanted to show you, uh, since we spoke about the Bloom's taxonomy levels and sometimes uh, we, I said that at uh, the analysis level, it becomes a little difficult to develop um, assessments. There is a website and they have... Uh, come up with an example and that is an example of how you can use e-learning to, uh, to, uh, to address uh, analysis level tasks. So that, that and that is, uh, that is actually called multi-path testing. I will just demonstrate the path to you and then I will explain uh, how, it, uh, how it goes. Now this is scenario based e-learning and you can find this, there is a URL that is at the bottom, you can go and uh, 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 test it out there. But this is a scenario based learning. So you've got a lieutenant who is about to meet a tribal leader in Afghanistan and he is going to be presented with situations. Now depending on the choices the lieutenant makes, depending on the cho choices the lieutenant makes, there will be either a good outcome or there would be a less than good outcome or there would be a bad outcome to the whole scenario. And the measure of the success of this uh, exercise is 
how few steps did you take in order to arrive at the good scenario so let's just look at it for uh, so right now it says that your lieutenant is young he's new he's about to mess up unless you give him good advice and uh, here is the introduction to the caste so you've got lieutenant on the other hand and the uh, tribal uh, leader on the other, uh, on the other so this is an exercise in negotiating skills and that again is a soft skills and this is a good example of how it works now you've got these two people so you've got uh, sergeant manuel ramos and you've got uh, kenneth butler who are there to offer him advice now these are the options that you will have when you are negotiating or when you are making decisions now <clears throat> watch what happens as they go he notices that uh, there is a cannabis field or a, you know pot field or opium field and he has some mixed feelings about it right now here is a situation that haji kamal is going to offer me chai i hate chai and i am afraid it will make me sick what should i do when he offers it the scenario unfolds now <clears throat> uh one person says that he will have to take the chai the other person says that uh, you know he is allergic and can't drink chai the situation is presented to you let me pour you some chai now you've got and you've got three options no thanks i'm not thirsty uh, i wish i could drink chai but unfortunately i'm allergic to it and thank you i'd like some chai one of these options is the good option one of these options is the not so good options option and the third option is the bad option now if you continue selecting bad options your scenario will be over in less than 3 or 4 iterations but if you if you let's say select the not so good option your scenario can go either way at in and at the next instance you might choose a good option and your scenario might go good from there uh, good for you from there or you might choose the good, good option throughout and that is how the this is actually called um, multi path testing and this is becoming very popular nowadays but it requires a high degree of skill of envisioning every possible scenario but like i said that e learning is very effective when it comes to uh, when it comes to maintenance so those scenarios can be easily added and then you can also go about uh, then you can also go about modifying a particular uh, modifying a particular scenario by that i mean that let's say that you've got this haji kamal scenario you could take the bare bones of this scenario to another situation now this one was dealing with decision making or negotiating skills the other one for example could uh, deal with the the uh, interviewing skills for example that uh, i am a person who is turning up for an interview i've been asked such and such a question what is it that i answer so last night i was practicing the interview with two of my friends one of my friends said okay if you are if he asks you this question this is what you answer if he asks you this the other one says no you answer like this and then i choose my response again it becomes good bad ugly or good not so good bad uh, response and the scenario keeps on unfolding and that's uh, pretty much it now to summarize uh, what is e learning well simply it is Uh, technology enabled learning uh, what does e learning what does e learning uh, what does uh, is e learning effective for every situation no it is not effective for every situation what kind of topics does uh, e learning best support well knowledge based articles or uh, knowledge based topics or skill based topics those are the best uh, is e learning the future to some extent yes i would say blended learning is definitely the future because uh, you can't have people flying in to different uh, places just to get trained uh, training and development uh, leaders uh, you know they will realize that uh, unless or until you do not make training a profit center you will always be asked questions that you know is it really worth the investment and that is a question that we always uh, that we most of the times have to answer e learning can be a very effective uh, answer to that but once again we have to focus whether e learning is 
the right solution or not thank you so very much i am rupinder and i am ready to take any questions that you might have thank you that was uh, that was an excellent uh, and thought provoking session rupinder thank you so much uh, for that now we do have a, a lot of questions so i'll just uh, read them out to you the okay. first question we have is um, we have a question from aaron uh, this mm -hmm. question is uh, is information better retained in the traditional classroom or through e learning good question i would say that uh, given the right set of instructions classroom but also keep in mind that when you are learning where, where when you utilize e learning you have the power of reinforcement you can always go back to your e learning again and again but you can't go back to your instructor that might not always be possible great um the next question is from jessica uh, it's a fairly similar question but she says uh, uh, for language training uh, is e learning more effective than e than traditional classroom um personally i don't think so not as of now but there are intelligent learning uh, program or um, uh, there are in intelligent learning uh, uh, intelligent so artificial intelligence is coming in and there are programs that uh, who will ultimately be able to kind of teach language uh, uh, at least at the level of a human being if not better great so um the next question is also from aaron um he says as an lnd professional i want to know if there are any solutions to measure learning outcomes there are there are uh, there are i mean uh, i usually uh, so one once again to measure learning outcomes you have tools e learning also provides you with those tools they will run inside an lms you uh, you will uh, get uh, reports but that would be at uh, level 2 of kirkpatrick model so that would be through assessments or or, or how much have they learned uh, if you are talking specifically about e learning others will have to be external interventions wherein you apply your own measures maybe you measure the skills before they go in for the particular e learning or uh, and then you measure the skills afterwards great we have another question from rohan um mm -hmm. he asks uh, what is the difference between authoring and simulation ah good question so there was a time when we had uh, three or four different roles when it came to e learning so one was the writer now this person would actually conceptualize how the e learning would look like and write in words what they wanted to see on the screen or uh, how the functionality would work now these people would have very limited knowledge of the tools uh, required uh, required to Uh, uh, required to actually create the functionality so then you had some simulation experts or some development expert who would actually translate the what they have written to what they wanted to see and uh, in between these two you had the quality reviewers who would take the requirements from both the sides now again i'm going back to the days when we used to author using flash so there you used to have course authors on one hand and then you had course enablers who would actually uh, tra translate whatever was written into code now a days you have something like uh, you have an uh, a tool like adobe captivate or an articulate storyline so that line is slowly getting blurred out but it's uh, at some level i still believe that um, you know these two are uh, quite different courses now of course uh, the authors you could say they have been replaced by subject matter experts so they will send you content and then you have to imagine how that content is going to look like you visualize that and then you translate that onto what it is going to look like on screen great 
Great. Um, we have another question from uh, Kapilesh. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, what is the difference between e-learning and plain Googling or YouTubing? That's actually a good question. Uh, the answer is uh, e-learning is, I would say e-learning is measurable. Uh, we can make e-learning measurable. Uh, you could ask somebody to go and learn about something online and come back and then you could uh, assess them. E-learning uh, put, I would say that it kind of formalizes that learning. I mean, the, by the same logic, uh, I could go to college and earn a degree or maybe I could just look it up on Google. It, um, that answered your question, Flesh. Uh, um, Mamta has a question. Um, what are the basic parameters to evaluate LMS solutions? That is a very broad question, uh, evaluating LMS uh, solutions. Uh, most of the times, I think it fails because we don't know what we want out of a learning management system. Uh, and to be honest, learning management systems don't offer you, uh, LMS providers don't often offer you a whole gamut of uh, features so you could kind of pick and choose. Uh, with the arrival of the uh, SAS model software as a service model, for example, um, again, there are different pricing models. Sometimes you just need to know how much a student has covered or how much a learner has covered or whether they have completed it or not. Broadly, learning management systems will work on two principles. Either course completion as to, okay, uh, your, your course had 20 slides, the person was supposed to look at 18 slides, and if they've looked at 18 slides, it is marked as complete. The second option is that they take an assessment and they score a certain amount of, uh, they score a certain, um, they get to a certain score, and they get certified. Uh, there is also the concept of complete on launch. Uh, sometimes it is just about, you know, they just have to access the course and it is uh, kind of marked complete. But again, it depends on what features the LMS is offering and more importantly on what exactly do you want out of it. Because you will have to be very clear that, okay, I want my learners to access this course. I want them to, uh, you know, probably complete this quiz after accessing this course and if they are able to access if they are able to complete that quiz, then the course uh, is effective, so to speak. Um, we have another question from uh, Srinivas Muthi. Um, he asks, can you share a few more websites for e-learning similar to Course Mill? Um, so course mill the, that website was it's actually and a, a learning management system it was there in one of the, the in one of the organizations that i attended you will actually have to get access to a learning uh, management system for something similar to that however some uh, universities offer their courses online so if you could do a quick google search which universities offer what courses online you will get access uh, for that matter, uh, websites like uh, Coursera, EDX, Udacity, Udemy, all of these, they also offer a similar interface. Great. We have a, another question from uh, Ranju. That is, uh, can we have a similar kind of webinar for two hours? Uh, a session in succession to this? <laughs> so, Raju, I'm not sure... Uh, uh, Rupinder might have the time for that, but uh, I think towards the end we will sort of uh, help you connect with them so that you can have a more uh, detailed uh, conversation. What are your thoughts? And I will take, and I will take that as a compliment. <laughs> Excellent. Um, we have a few more questions. I think we'll only take maybe one or two more. I think we're sort of running short on time. Um, mm. uh, Amit has a question. Um, how is uh, Workday as an LMS, could you share your inputs on it? I've heard about Workday. Unfortunately, I've not uh, been able to access it as such, so can't really comment on it. Uh, I do know that um, 
a bunch of my friends are uh, they do work on work day but as of now i can't uh, comment on it because i don't uh, i haven't experienced it myself okay hope uh, answer the question amit amit also has another question um he wants to know more about uh, micro learning or bite size learning uh, he says mm -hmm. it's gaining prominence uh, yeah. or uh, wider acceptability uh, yeah. vis a vis e learning what do you recommend and why see episodic learning is something that uh, you can uh, is definitely gaining ground because it offers learning in <clears throat> in smaller in smaller size uh, uh it 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 is for example and obviously it is more ubiquitous than e learning since it can be accessed via any device or mobile device or anything so it's effectively what it is that you have let's say 10 minutes and you want to learn about something in those you know, 10 minutes you can access the learning content about that uh, <clears throat> one way of doing it is that you take up a course or you take up a topic and you decide that okay here is a 2 minute primer to it here is a 10 minute primer to it or or here is a 10 minute course on it or here is an on our long course on it it is gaining promise, uh, prominence and i think for, for reinforcement purposes it will be a very good uh, you know, learning intervention excellent um i think we'll take one last question uh, from vikas uh because would like to know uh, about uh, tools to help create simulations as i covered uh, some of those tools uh, so the uh, articulate story uh, so articulate storyline also has a tool to uh, for capturing simulations so does adobe captivate although adobe captivate seems to be the preferred tool uh, when it count, when cost is a factor if cost is not a factor then one of the best tools that i have worked on is a sima training suite however it is going to be massively more expensive than your regular run of the mill uh, simulation uh, simulation capture tools thank you so very much for having me and thank you for being such a patient audience no break so far so i guess i'm good and uh, i think uh... with that uh, we sort of end this uh, session um thank you rupender for speaking to all of us uh, here today that truly was uh, insightful and thought provoking session um i hope uh, all of you sort of had uh, fun uh, you know listening to our session now and um, i wanted to thank you all for coming out to us keep an eye out on future webinars uh, we'll be sharing them through your email or social media pages and uh, have a great day thank you rupender Thank you bye bye